Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is Eddie Marcus one more time, spokesman and advocate for basic human rights for all people. And when I say all people, I mean all people. And when I think about that sometimes when I'm alone by myself, I ask myself, am I out of my mind? I hear my people who are black like me talk about white people as being incorrigible, low down, dirty, evil devils. And hearing that so much, I might have used those expressions myself. But I can't hate white people. Maybe it has to do with me growing up in Mississippi, raised by very old people who probably came a little bit out of slavery. And they're teaching to me, and that which I got in the Methodist Church, the African Methodist Episcopal Church, and it'll be in Mississippi. Maybe all of that stuff had something to do with it. I don't really know. I just know I can't hate white people. I hate ugliness. I hate evilness. I don't care if it's in black people or white people. I hate it. Low down, dirty activities. I hate it. I don't care if it come out of black, white, men or women. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. But every time I hear people talk about how you should treat or how white people really are outside of what I have uh, come up with, I want to know how they do this. You know, black people didn't treat me as a slave as far as I know. but. If I look at America and my living here for these 67 years, the same dirt I've seen in black and white people, I've seen it in black people. The same ugliness I've seen in white people, I've seen it in black people. Most of the time, white people are doing it to black people, but I've seen them do it to white people. And most of the time, the ugliness that black people do, they're doing it to black people, but I've seen them do it to white people. The thing that makes me as I am is this. I believe in God. Excuse me. Hello? Yeah. It's up to you. I mean, if it's snowing, I didn't want to check getting that snow to come pick you up. But if it's not snow, it is snowing where you at? Did you get a lot of snow? Maybe two. <laughs> Look. Well, are the are other kids practicing or going home? Well, if you want to, why don't you just come on? But if you've got to practice, you can practice. Oh, okay, well, come on. All right. Bye. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, back to my conversation. Sorry about that. Daughter in a play. She wanted to stay at school and practice or wherever practice is going on, but the weather's bad today. And I don't know. As I was saying, to me, no human being made other human beings outside of a process, you know, where we have sex and women get pregnant, have babies. But that first human being, I have to think that something else brought it about. And I must say, I've been trained to believe that it was God. And I was taught that God was all good, so all the ugliness came from choice. So I think that 
in my own understanding, that white people are just like black people. They are a product of their exposure, a product of their environment, a product of their way of life. And I don't know where they come from. I've heard all kinds of things, but I just believe that. I believe also that living is an opportunity. It's a process, an opportunity for you to grow, to grow from ignorance to, to know better, to grow from a kid to a man, to from a childish ways to manly ways. I, I see white people and black people needing the same things for survival, food, clothing, shelter, education, health care, and a job. I see white people needing that. I understand that they have done some things to deny other people there. But to me, they're still human. They are little, They need a little bit more training. They need a little bit more God in their life, as far as I'm concerned. Yes, others might think they are filled with devilishness, and so are all other people, as far as I can see. And I'm a social scientist, but I don't base my belief just on social science. I base my belief on what I learn in life. Now, I think that white people, and here's another thing that guides me in this way of thinking. I think sometimes as what if I am white? Now, I look in the mirror, I know I'm black, but I try to put myself in the shoes of white people. And if I put myself in the shoes of white people, I see myself wanting to be treated just like everybody else. I don't see myself as a devil. I don't see, I realize that they as a white person, there's a lot of devilishness goes on in the white population. I see that as a white person. But I don't see myself as a devil. I see myself having the choice to do good and be nice and do kind things or the other. And so when I step back in my black shoes, I see that in white people as well. You know, we have a thing that we say that one of, history might have helped us with this, that one of the first people that were dying for us, one of them, not the first, for the freedom and liberation of blacks and the slaves was John Brown. I heard he was a white man. I heard that. I don't know if he was or not, but I heard it. And if that is true, then he, to me, was like Martin Luther King. He, to me, was just like any other black man that gave up his life for freedom. In fact, by being a white person to give up his life. And then I think about down in Mississippi, I think about the freedom struggles of the 50s and 60s. And white people were out there dying, giving up their lives, being beat side the head with baseball bats, just like black people, for the liberation of black people. So I can't hate white people. I hate a lot of their actions. I hate when they don't have any respect for black people. I hate all of that, but I can't hate them. So when I stand up and say freedom for all people, I'm talking about freedom from the ugliness, wherever it is. Black people, freedom from ugliness. White people, freedom from ugliness. Liberation from ugliness. Blue people, red people, all of you, freedom from that ugliness. And that's what I advocate for. I advocate reaching out, loving people. When they don't know how to love, teach them how to love. I just see things that way. So when I hear, you know who the great people are, people who are renowned. You know, you know, you know how, what we say and what they say about white people. And you're talking about Ku Klux Klan and killing niggas and nigga this and nigga that. Hey, I just figure they're stupid. I figure they're ignorant. But I think they just need an education. It might take much more education than they're getting. But I believe one thing, if black people straighten up, straighten their backs up and stood up, but first to do that, they got to grow up, grow up spiritually, grow up in love, and then stand tall. I believe they can stop a white man right in his track. And I believe right in this track, white man will begin to learn what loving is all about. Now, when I say the white man, 
I'm talking about the masses of the white people, or the white people that hate so much, because they are, you can say what you want to say. I believe, my experience has taught me, that they are white people who are just as loving as black people. Now, black people, I know many of you don't want to hear me say this, but don't you be the one that kill me because I say these things. Don't you be the one. If I gotta die for loving white people, let it be white people that kill me, not you. Well, I struggled through that. Maybe I made a point. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.